Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel. You got Bert the Hurt here, Lanny Legend over there, the Dividend Diplomats. Guys, in today's video, we're going to see if someone can take the title belt away from SEHD. SEHD is the king of the dividend ETF community for, for many. Can this person knock them off the throne? Can they take the belt from them? We're going to investigate another high-yielding dividend ETF right now guys smash that subscribe button give us a nice thumbs up on that road to twenty thousand subs help us help you help us help you guys again we're entering back in the etf space you guys may know but a little somebody here has been buying a certain etf every single week bert what are you currently doing we're buying five shares of schd every single week no matter what we're growing that position we're almost at 300 shares of SEHD, and we're not stopping we said we're going to keep going we're going to keep buying more we're not stopping that train lanny's a vanguard guy himself so he's buying vym every single week for himself and his wife but we're always looking for great etfs we're always looking for another one to add into the equation a lot of people have referenced and talked about this one. So that's why we're going to be looking at this new dividend ETF today too. Guys, let us know. Are you buying SCHD this year? How much have you been gobbling up? Let us know in those comments, guys. But yeah, Bert stumbled across another high dividend yield ETF, a high dividend growth ETF, one that plays pretty well in a different industry that most most of these high yielding ETFs don't play too much from a concentration in. But what what ETF did you come across? And um, you know, then we'll obviously take a look at the stats. We're heading over to Fidelity. We're talking about Fidelity's high dividend ETF ticker symbol F D V V. This fund was founded in 2016. You pull up their strategy from their perspective, from their website. Let's just read it off here. Normally invests in at least 80% of assets and securities included in the Fidelity High Dividend Index and in depository receipts representing securities included in the index. Okay, so this definition went to something else we now have to define. What is the Fidelity High Dividend Index? Um the Fidelity High Dividend Index is designed to reflect the performance of stocks in large and mid-cap dividend-paying companies that are expected to continue to pay and grow their dividends. Pretty vague, gives Fidelity a lot of wiggle room to put stocks in and take them out of the ETF if they please. As you know, SCHD could not be more polar opposite. SCHD does an annual rebalancing every single year. They don't like stocks having more than 4% concentration at the time of the rebalancing. They don't like stocks that don't fit their that don't fit their very specific rules. FDVB is like, yeah, let's take some flexibility here. Who who cares? We don't need to define it. We'll come up with it ourselves. Very interesting, guys. FDVV been around again as Bert said about 8 years. Get a few billion dollars in the ETF. Expense ratio is pretty high comparatively, you know, 0.15%. Um, but it's pretty interesting here, though, Bert, because when you peel back those top 10 holdings here, as we said, really tech heavy, you yeah. know, just to kind of run down the top 10, you got Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Procter & Gamble somehow gets in there, ExxonMobil, Broadcom, Philip Morris, Altria Group, Xterra Energy, and Targa Resources Group, so... Mm -hmm. You know, those first three positions, very much a cap heavy, AI tech heavy with Apple, NVIDIA and Microsoft. And the allocations are what's interesting, too, from this. Apple's 5.78 percent. NVIDIA is 5.65 percent. Microsoft is 5.28 percent. Number three, Procter & Gamble is only 2 percent. So it's very much weighted in those tech stocks at the top which is very fascinating. And Broadcom is in there too at number six, and they're only 2% as well. So a lot of tech allocation built up in that top 10%, which is a very fascinating take for a high dividend paying fund. No, exactly, guys. And um, 110 positions, 30% yeah. in those top 10. So 
you know that the remaining, you know, hundred positions are very, very small. Obviously, with yeah. Target at one point seven percent, so everybody else is making up pretty small spots out of the other hundred companies to make up seventy percent. Yeah, and we'll pull up the holdings here, breakdown by sector. Tech obviously is the largest at twenty four percent, followed by industrials, consumer defensive, utilities, energy, real estate, financials. Um, all of which are kind of squeezed in the middle of that pack. You're right. There's not the only one that's really out of balance here is that tech sector that's front loaded at the very top. Everything else is pretty flat and spaced out among the sector. But then when you actually get in again now, so FDVV currently yields, they lag behind SEHD. SEHD obviously taking the cake here at 3.45% yield. Um, but FDVV trailing right now is 2.93%. So they have a very similar yield, I would say, more to a VYM currently. Um, but the dividend growth is kind of what's pretty wild, right, Bert? Yeah, that's right. Um, SEHD, we know they've had slower dividend growth over the last few years, a higher over as well. Their three-year dividend growth rate, 9.51%. Five-year dividend growth rate is 13.2%. That's through the end of 2023. FDVV, their three-year dividend growth rate, 16.05%. Five-year dividend growth rate is 8.79%. So over the last five years, they're trailing SCHD's average growth rate, but they are crushing them over the last three years through 2023. I'm going to draw that distinction right there. Through the end of 2023, their growth rate is stronger at 16% compared to 9.51 for SCHD. And Lanny, I drew that distinction in there because I wanted to say 2024 has kind of flipped the script on them. So we always like to compare on this channel the Q1 to Q1 from the previous year, Q2 to Q2 from the previous year. What has SCHD done and what has FDVV done in the first two quarters? It's interesting because SCHD's dividend was up Q1 at 2.43%, Q124 versus Q123. And then SCHDs was also up in the second quarter dividend, about 19.34%. But then FDVV, and I don't know if it's because of the introduction of NVIDIA into the mix, you know, because they had no growth, so it kind of messes with the, but, you know, 26.19% down Q124 versus Q123, 11.63% down on the dividend growth. That dividend payout in the second quarter versus the second quarter last year. So obviously as an investor in FDVV, there's one thing if you're down two, three, four percent, but being down 26% and then thinking you might make up for it in the second quarter, but then you don't and actually take another step backwards, a little disheartening for FDVV shareholders. Let us know, by the way, if you guys felt the same, if you own FDVV. Yeah, so you're seeing some correction here. They had strong dividend growth over the last couple of years, especially as tech started to take off in there. Now it's clawing back and it's allowing SCHD, VYM, both to kind of catch up to FDD, FDV, where they came sprinting out of the gate from the dividend growth standpoint. Let's talk about performance, though, because I think this is where it's going to be very interesting. And that's what people want to see. Is FDVV performing better than SCHD? Well, in 2024, FDVV is up 14.4%. SCHD is only up 6.92%. Interesting, interesting. On the one-year note, um, they're up 20% compared to SCHD's up 11%. And over the last five years, FDVV is up 62%. 2% compared to 50% for an SDHD. So they are beating them on the performance standpoint. Crushing, crushing right now. And it's mm -hmm. got to be for the same reasons we all know. It's because yeah. look who's in the top 10. So here's the question. FDV has a lower yield, better dividend growth before 2023. I mean, before 2024, 2024, their growth is much lower than SCHD. Performance, they are outperforming them because of their tech allocation. The question is, can FDVV unseat SCHD of the king of the dividend investing community right now? Mm -hmm. I I think what we're, I, I mean, because FDVV has been around for eight years. SCHD has been around for, is it 12, 13 years, something like that? A little bit longer. Um 
obviously not to say that we know how tech usually plays out. Not every company just booms in every single time for all of eternity, right? Yeah. So we'll have to see what Q3, Q4 dividends look like. Do they rebound in that dividend growth department? Do they finally crawl back up and say, hey, we are here? Because I know I'm looking at this list and I'm like, I know that there's a bunch of dividend growth right here. Altria just did their 4%. I'm pretty sure Broadcom had a double digit banger this year. So there's a lot of companies on this list that has really juiced up their dividends. So I'm very curious what's going on in yeah. a dividend payout. Yeah. And I'd say it's, it's just straight in the video. I don't know. Yeah. To make a sports analogy out of it. Um, it's, it, we kind of touched on it in our video yesterday where we talked about NVIDIA's price coming out, how hard it is to grow. It's one thing to make it into the playoffs. It's great that your team can make it into the playoffs, right? It's another thing to compete for a title. And I think you can say every year, SCHD, VYM are title contenders. You can feel good that LeBron's making it to the finals. LeBron's going to go deep when he was on his nine straight finals in the East. FDV is in the playoffs. They're making a great run at it. They have a cool take with tech. They have a cool take with some of the other ones. But the question is, can it perform over the long haul? And I very much agree, Lanny. Let's see how the rest of 2024 um, plays out. See what that dividend growth looks like throughout the end of the year. And see, are they better than SCHD? Can they rebound on the dividend growth? And can they keep outperforming? Yeah. I mean, let us know what you guys think about FDVV. Is this an ETF that interests you? Do you see some positives from here, maybe from the appreciation department since they have outperformed over the last five year, one year, year to date? Do you think that there are even brighter pastures ahead for FDVV or are you sticking with SCHD guys? Let us know below, please. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Remember, you're either with us or you're against us, Jack. That was Bert. The Hurt and Lanny from the Dividend Diplomats over and out.